Welcome once more to the Phil Taylor Jones Show. We are so happy you could join us for this episode. Today's focus is going to be um, a revisitation to Sandra Bland and what happened to her at the hands of a police officer down there in Texas. And um, I was looking at a program on telly just a little bit before uh, Christmas. I think it was the day before Christmas. And it really upset me because I actually got a chance to see the whole video of this heinous and horrible act uh, perpetrated by this man with a badge. I'm Phil Taylor Jones, your host, and let's jump on into this tragedy right now. Sandra Bland, um, to me, was just a little bit different than all the other cases that have been in the, in the news lately. Not to say that any one life is more important than the other, but as you look at, uh, say, Laquan McDonald in, in Chicago, um, was attributed with, you know, problematic, a problematic lifestyle, gangs and what have you. Not to say that the, the poor fellow should have been killed the way he did, but, you know, in, in, in some like manners with Mike Brown, uh, allegedly had uh, stolen something from a liquor store, which kind of perpetuated the whole thing with his death. Um, and other people, um, Trayvon Martin, there was some kind of connection with trouble or what have you. Sandra Bland was different. Woman was going to Texas in search of a job. She was switching jobs and just driving down the street, minding her own business, when she made an illegal lane change. And then this cop pulled her over and you could see from the actual start of this confrontation that this guy had ill intent in his heart. The way he addressed her, the way he lorded it over her was just a paramount issue that he you know, was out to get rid of somebody that day, uh, somebody black. Um, he walked up to the car and asked her, was she agitated? And she told him that she was. And then it escalated from there because I guess that's not what he wanted to hear. Well, my idea is if the woman had stayed silent, he would have then reacted to that. What are you being silent for? You better adjust police officers when they talk to you. Get out of the car and I light you up. He, it was his intent to, to do that woman bodily harm, to arrest her. And then I feel that when they got her to the station, they did something else that was heinous and horrible and didn't want to get caught up with, so they killed her and made it look like suicide. Anything that these police officers do doesn't surprise me. And let me just put this out there. Am I speaking of all the police officers? No. As I've alluded to so many other times in so many other episodes, those police officers that are out there doing what's on their cars, protecting and service, uh, serving their communities and putting their lives on the line every day in our protection knowing that they have families that they need to get back to, much kudos to those good, honest-hearted police officers. Good on you, mates, because you are out there providing a service and we appreciate it. On that score, a man in blue is a friend to you. And I believe that about that set of officers that are out there doing the good stuff. But to those sleaze bags that pin a tin badge on them and their little pop guns drive around their little Dodge Chargers or their Ford Explorers or whatever they choose to drive these days, just going around trying to blow people away for no apparent reason, putting 16 shots into a person that's running away from them as they did in Chicago with Laquan McDonald. That's over the top. That's disgraceful. That's disgusting. And why would anybody want to trust you when they know that you're out to kill them. I remember some other incident, I, I, it, it sort of escapes my mind right now, where this officer, I know it was somewhere down south, where this officer jumped up on the hood of these people's cars and just unloaded on them, expending about 26 shots. I mean, that's ridiculous. That is 
over the top, ridiculous. And in the case of Sandra Bland, it's a travesty because the attorneys that are working uh, on her behalf still have yet to get reports and evidence about what happened almost uh, a half a year ago now. Look at the case of Laquan McDonald and Rahm Emanuel, the mayor of Chicago, who sat on information and who is now trying to be recalled or, or, or gotten out of there because he was a crook. Same thing in Texas. They're sitting on information because they know that poor girl died a most heinous death. $5,000 bail. Why in the name of common judgment would a supposed traffic violation go up to $5,000 in bail with the death of a young woman? I think our exec has something here. I think you were referring to in maybe Cleveland where there was 13 police officers. They fired 137 rounds into a car, killing two, and it's expected to be interviewed by investigators. Is that the one you were referring to? Oh, so there was to? in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that there, there was, they were talking about this one guy, one police officer jumped on the hood, and after, I think he put 24 of the shots in there. Okay, well, this is after a high-speed chase. Yeah. That might be the wrong one. Oh, no, no, I think you're referring to the right one. But I'm just saying 124 shots. I mean, come on. But this one guy, he jumped up on the hood. He put 24 of them in there himself. 137. Oh, excuse me. I stand directed. 13. So, I mean, just look at this. It's just lunacy. 13 officers. They're just crabbing in onto a car trying to kill everybody in there. It's, it's ridiculous. So here we have this beautiful young woman who had so much promise. I mean, they showed pictures of her. And, I, I, I mean, you know, I, I kind of got welled up with emotion thinking of... Her family, her beautiful mom and sister, and her sister, by the way, looks like she was a twin sister, um, you know, and they're alone. There's an empty spot at the table. There's an empty space under the Christmas tree uh, this year because Sandra's not there at the hands of some jackass, some idiot, some murderer who wanted to kill her or anyone that he might have encountered that day, especially if they were black. Now, they talk about this Black Lives Matter thing. In fact, I have to give this uh, kudos to my uh, exec, my brother. He said they should change that uh, language to Black Lives Should Matter because they obviously don't, you know. And it seems more and more that these rogue police officers who will be willing to kill anybody, because there have been a lot of white folks that are killed by police officers. There have been a lot of Hispanic people killed by police officers, you know. Um, so if they're heinous, rogue cops that, you know, want to lord it over people, this is probably the first little authority they've ever had and it's gone straight to their bloody heads. And they'll just go and kill everybody out there, including animals. There was a case right here in California, in SoCal, not too far from where we live, where um, they were doing some kind of, you know, crap to some guy that was on the street and a passerby was walking his dog. So he decided to film, you know, what was going on in case, you know, they tried to kill the guy. Well, one officer caught sight of the guy um, taking pictures and he ordered him to put his camera phone down and he wouldn't do it. He said, you know, I'm just a regular citizen. I have the right to take pictures. So they grabbed the guy and slammed him down. Well, naturally, the guy had a Rottweiler. And the Rottweiler saw what was going on to his human, and he reacted. Well, a dog is a dog is a dog. The dog doesn't have the mentality as smart as they are to say, oh, well, that's a police officer. I won't charge him and bite him. You know, the dog reacted. You're messing with his human. So the dog went over and tried to get the, the cop, and the cop shot the dog dead. They'll kill anything. It moves. And if it doesn't move, they'll try to make it move so they can kill it. All? No. But these rogue cops, you know, it, this is sick. So I just had to, you know, weigh in on Sandra Bland. I know my brothers uh, wanted to jump in here. But, you know, to this young woman who lost her life for no reason, a sort of an alleged, you know, <clears throat> illegal lane change. Come on. Any other cop would have gone up and said, hey, um, ma'am, you made a, a little faux pas back there. 
you know, so, you know, if, let me see your license and registration and proof of insurance, whatever the hell they ask for. And say, okay, well, this time I'm going to let you off with a warning. But, you know, as Archie Bunker would say, don't do that no more. You know, or if you want to go in and issue a citation, then do that. You don't have to charge, the, the slam the woman on the floor so hard that you can't hear and make her put her phone down and make her put her cigarette out and embarrass her and then ultimately kill her and then say that she did it herself. That's lunacy. It's ludicrous. And, you know, it's because of these liberal, ludicrous lunatics that a lot of this crap is happening. We got to tighten up on that stuff. Uh, go on, Chris. <clears throat> what we were speaking about earlier, you were right. Uh, Melissa, M A L I S A, Melissa Williams got shot 24 times. Mm -hmm. If black lives are supposed to matter or should matter, as you alluded to about what I was saying earlier, then that shouldn't, some things like that shouldn't happen. 24 times that person has murder in their heart and they want to get rid of a black person. And it's been going on too often and it's getting out of hand. It's been out of hand and it's ridiculous. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy. And, you know, it, it makes me think that if, based on what I've been hearing, every time I step out the door, I got a bullseye on my head, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm not the most littlest, you know, an obscure person, you know, I'm a pretty big, hefty guy. Big so, you know, <laughs> that means my, my target is bigger. So, when I see a cop car or a cop going down the street, yeah, I'm going to kind of look at them hawkishly, you know, because I don't trust them. Now, again, am I saying this about all police officers? Can they all not be trusted? No, I'm not saying that. But just on general principle, upon seeing them, no, I don't trust all of them until I get to know that person. And if that person is a good police officer, okay, yeah, I can trust you. But just on first sight, I don't trust none of them. Because you can't. You don't know which one is the police officer. Again, just like regular people. You know, like we say about these Muslim extremists, they're not saying, hey, I'm an extremist, stay away from me, I'll slit your throat. Praise be to Allah, you know. Well, the same way with these nutty police officers that, you know, the rogue nutballs out there. Hey, I'm a nutty cop. I'm a dirty cop. So I might kill you. Stay away from me, you know, or don't let me catch up with you. So, I mean, this is out of hand. My heart and, 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 and you know, feelings goes out to uh, Sandra's mother and, and, her, and her sister because they were so hurt. You can see the hurt in their faces. Uh, about this, their beautiful sister and beautiful daughter gone for nothing. No criminal ties, no nothing, no gang ties. The woman was, I believe they said she was 29 years old, you know, just living her life as she could, getting a job, working, supporting herself, had her own car. And this bastard just goes up and just does that to her. And you could see it. You could see it in his action, his demeanor, his vocal tones. You could just see that this guy was out for blood. 28. Well, she's 20. Well, the, well, she would have been 29 now. Yeah, 28 years old. Um, just life wasted. In just three days. Went from detained to deceased. Yeah, three days. They did something to her and they didn't want it to get out. And uh, she ended up dead, and they're still sitting on, uh, maybe they might have given it down because people went on the national television, but at the time I saw it, they were still sitting on vital information that could help them with, uh, you know, bringing this, this bastard under the guise of a police officer to, uh, to justice. So, again, um, we must, uh, again, be, watch ourselves because... We don't live in a friendly world anymore. You know, it, it's crazy on all ends. You got to watch the police. You got to watch the, the muzzy extremists. You got to watch the regular nuts out there, regular foreigners. You know, it, you got to watch each other as Americans because some Americans are even sympathetic to this supposed police officer. Oh, well, he had every right to do what he did. He, he, you know, she was disobeying the law. He told her to put her cigarette out. She was smoking a cigarette in her own car. And, you know, she couldn't have been smoking it because she was constantly talking to him. So it must have been in the ashtray. 
but he just wanted to lord it over her. Put that phone down after he snatched her out the car. Put that phone down. <laughs> and you could see her going over to put the phone down on the car. And then it escalated to the point where he slams her, just hurls her to the ground and hurts her. Oh, and this was the really jackass part that shows that he was just a bastard. She said that she had epilepsy. He says, good. I believe it was epilepsy. Uh, I know it was some affliction, but I think it was epilepsy. Good. I mean, what a bastard. So, I mean, you got to keep an eye on this and watch mm -hmm. out for it. Go ahead. And get this. The officer alleges that she assaulted him. Oh. <laughs> totally crazy, folks. Um, so, we... Um, We'll keep an eye on that and bring more information to you uh, when we get it. And uh, all I can say is stay, uh, stay safe out there uh, because it's, it's, it's crazy. We don't live in a friendly world. There are so many things that we have to watch out for. And our government sure doesn't give a damn about us uh, because they perpetuate a lot of this stuff that goes on. In fact, um, there was a movie that came, uh, not a movie, but a series. It came on, I think it was in the early part of 2000, the year, I think it was 2004, 2005, something like that. It was called Prison Break. And we just started watching it on Netflix. And man, if you have seen it, or if you have yet to see it, you'll know what I'm saying, those that have seen it, when I say that is one of the most chilling depictions of what the federal government can do or are capable of. For those of you who haven't seen it, I'm not gonna uh, destroy the plot for you because you know, say, oh, gee, Phil, why'd you blow it for me? I, I was gonna go and look at it. Uh, but those of you who have, who have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It's just, it's just, it's scary because they can do this stuff and mess up a person so much so that they never get out of it. So that's a, Heads up on something good to watch if, if you're looking for a good uh, show to watch. It's called Prison Break, and uh, it runs uh, four seasons, and it's very, very good, and I think you'll enjoy it. And it will also give you a heads up on what this crazy government of ours can do. Have a good one. Have, um, stay safe and happy. Uh, look forward to that new year. Don't make so many, um, what do they call them, uh, New Year's resolutions. They never work. So just try to be the best you you can be. And uh, we wish you a happy new year. And we'll talk to you next time right here on the old Phil Taylor Jones show. Bye-bye.